In this video we want to do some data manipulation work in Excel. So if you go to Isidore and find the spreadsheet called data underscore manipulation, that's uh, the starting point for this tutorial here. So what we have is a list of data that we pulled from actually a Civil 3D model and it's all in text so if you look at this text here it's got uh, details on a point gives you the layer gives you a point handle but it also gives us XYZ data and what I would like to do is extract the XYZ data from this list primarily just the X and Y do some trigonometry on it and then maybe do some angle conversions just to give you guys an idea of how to deal with this type of data. We'll also get into some sorting and duplicate removal as well. So the very first thing we need to do is figure out how to get this data into a format we want. We've talked about text manipulation functions using find and left and right and mid, but that's a bit too much for this and there's a much simpler way. So what we want to do is actually select column A here and go to the data tab and then there's a text to columns function here. This is similar to what would happen if you were to import a text file. It brings up this dialog and what we want to do is actually uh, choose this delimited option because we know that the data we want is separated by commas and the equal sign here. So we'll pick delimited, go to next, we'll make sure comma is selected and then the other one we want is the equal sign and you can see now that the lines here designate the different columns the data is going to go into and so our X, Y, and Z data is going to get broken up uh, and we also want to use a space so that uh, we can further reduce the data here so we'll end up with columns for the X, Y, and Z. Uh, we can just finish this up we don't need to worry about the formatting and you can see now it took all of that text and it broke it into individual cells here and it's still not quite in the format we want. Uh, maybe the easiest thing to do is go ahead and, and clean up the text or we could create some formulas to do that. I think I'm going to just do some uh, column deletion. So I'll pick these three columns, right click and delete. I'll delete the Y out of there and then I'll delete the Z's. And what I'm left with is some tabular data here. Uh, we can delete this select move our cells over here uh, and then what we want to do is actually select our data and we're going to use the F5 key so that we can do a special selection so I'm going to hit special and I just want to select blank cells and if I hit OK you'll see now that all the blank cells in between are selected and I don't have to manually select them and if I right click I can hit delete and shift the cells up and now all of that data is in a nice table for me. Uh, if we label this X and Y, maybe make these bold, and we can reposition it if we want. So we could do a Control X to cut it, and we'll paste it up here in A1. So there is my data that came from that list with very little work. The next thing I want to do is just make sure I didn't have any duplicate points. So we could select this list, go back to the data tab, and there is a remove duplicate here. So I'll click on that. You'll see that it has a checkbox to see if my data has headers. It does. So make sure that that is checked if it's the case. And then I've got columns X and Y here. I'm going to remove duplicates that make sure that each of these uh, is duplicated. So I'm going to get rid of an entire row if it matches a, another row. And you can see that one of these values was actually a duplicate. Uh, if I undo it, we can try to find it here. It's this pair here. So you can manually go in and search for them. But if you've got a really long list, oftentimes it's easier just to use the remove duplicates. The next item that I would like to do is sorting these based on their X coordinates. So if you select this row again, go back to the Home tab, and under Editing, there's a Sort and Filter. A lot of times you can use these first two, but if you want to, you can do more advanced sorting using this custom sort. Again, it's got a, a my data has headers. And what I want to do is sort by X from smallest to largest. What we could do now is actually plot this. So if you go to insert, 
we're going to insert a chart that's called a scatter chart and I want to use scatter with uh, lines with markers. All right, so you can see I've got a nice series of points here and what I would like to do now is actually some uh, trigonometry on these points. So what I would like to do is compute the offset from the starting point to each of these points in the X as well as the Y. So we'll just leave that down there. I'm going to call this DX and DY and I'll make these bold again using control B. So DX is going to be the difference between my X value and the very first X value. So since I always want that to be the case, I'm going to lock that and I'm going to want to copy this over for the DY. So I'm going to just lock the row. So you can see there, if I zoom in, <clears throat> I've got A2 minus A$2, which means that when I copy this, it's always going to be referencing row 2. And I didn't lock it fully because I'm lazy and I want to just be able to copy this over and now have my Y minus the Y in the second row as well. Uh, I can copy paste all these down and there you can see the delta and the X and the delta and the Y. If I wanted to compute an angle from these I can use the arctangent so we'll call this angle and we use the arctangent function and we're going to use the arctangent of the Y value divided by the X so the opposite over adjacent and I want to convert this to degrees so I'll multiply by 180 divided by pi. And the angle is zero, obviously, so we'll get a division error there, but all the others should be, uh, should be angles that we can work with. So we'll just manually override this one to be zero, since we know that to be the case. Uh, oftentimes in surveying, which is a class you guys will take, you need to express angles in terms of degrees, minutes, and seconds. So what I'd like to do is now take these angles and actually work through um, the, the computation there. Before we do that, let's compute a distance for, between this point and all the other points. So we'll right click and insert a column and we'll call this distance. And really what we're doing is finding the distance from this first point to every subsequent point. So from point 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4. So in order to do this, we need to find the uh, hypotenuse of this triangle formed by the dx and dy here. So this would be the square root of my dx squared plus my dy squared. And the first one's... Uh, actually took that, um, so the square root of 0 is 0, but all these rest should give us a distance uh, around this particular set of points here. So now we have a distance and an angle from our starting point to each of these subsequent points here. Uh, as is the case in surveying, you may want to express these as azimuths. So right now they're just measured with respect to the horizon here. So right now what we want to do is express the angles here as degrees, minutes, and seconds. So these are angles measured from the horizon uh, or the horizontal angle. You can convert these to azimuths if you wanted to, but we'll just work with them as is. So the very first thing we want to do is determine the sine of the angle and there's a sine function for that that returns 1 or negative 1. So you can see they're all going to be negative here. Uh, and then we want to find the absolute value of the angle and this is going to make our degrees, minutes, seconds calculation far easier. So we'll take the absolute value of these things and then what we want to do is find the uh, decimal value uh, for the degrees, or sorry, the integer value for the degrees. So we can just use the int function, int, and we want to do that on the absolute value so that our formula works properly. So you can see now we have the integer value, uh, and then we can find the minutes by taking our angle minus our integer so that gives us a fractional 
degrees and we can multiply that by 60 to convert those to minutes. So for instance here we know this angle is actually 4 degrees 9.9 .9 minutes and we can find the integer minutes using the same formula in of our decimal minutes. And then we can find the seconds as well. And I'm just going to copy paste this formula because it'll work based on the positioning here. So we take our decimal minutes and subtract our integer minutes. And those are our seconds. And maybe we want to round our seconds as well to two degrees or two decimal places. So we'll do a round function. And it takes a number and the second argument is the number of decimal places. So we'll round all of our seconds to the hundredth of a second here. We can format our seconds just so we're, we're aware that there are two decimal places. And then what we can do is actually combine these. So we've got our degrees, our minutes, and our seconds. So now we want to put these things all together. Uh, so the way to do that is going to be to retrieve the sign value here and let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll call this the signed degrees and we'll just take the sign times our integer degree and apply that all the way down and then our degrees, minutes, and seconds is going to be a concatenation of, of text strings here. So we'll do equals uh, we'll do the degree minutes, or sorry, the degree value, ampersand, parenthesis, capital D, ampersand, our minutes, and we'll put that uh, followed by quotation, apostrophe, quotation, and then lastly we'll join the seconds, and we'll follow that up with uh, quotation. So in order to get a quotation symbol as a literal text string, we actually have to put two of those symbols in a row. So you'll see at the very end of that formula there are actually four quotations. And that'll allow us to express this as zero degrees, uh, some, some minutes and some seconds with all the symbols. And it looks like I picked up the wrong minutes function here. Um, so we need to swap that over. And then I'll copy paste that as well. And there we have it.